here. Dr. Leah Lagos, sports psychologist, sports editor for Daily National, Mike Bako, and neurosurgeon at uh, New York Presbyterian Cornell Weill, Dr. Roger Hartle. Thank you all so much for being here. And I think, uh, I'll just to put this out there, is that I think the reason we're talking about this story yeah. is here, here's a young man who, he, he wasn't an all-star player. He never played a single game. He wrestled, but Again, we're talking about concussions. So how serious is it? Is it practice? Where is it happening? So we wanted to bring you guys in here because, look, a lot of high school kids are out there practicing just the same way. So we want to make sure that you're informed on this issue. So let's, let's start with, with you, doctors. CTE, what is it? What do we need to know? Dr. Yeah. Uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy is a, um, is a pattern that we see in, in the brains, in the, in the neuropathological uh, findings of brains, of, uh, especially of, of boxers. It was described wow. in the 1920s. Uh, as a very distinct uh, picture of findings that you see in these pathological specimen of brains of boxers. And it was uh, reconfirmed and kind of rediscovered really just a few years ago in the brains of football players, of military personnel, individuals with a history of, pro of, of profound concussions. But can CTE be linked to depression and suicide? That is a, that is a very important question and I think we have these, uh, uh, we have these uh, case reports of athletes who commit suicide, which is terrible. And we have to take this very seriously because a lot of these athletes obviously have a long history of concussion mm -hmm. and there may, there may be a link, but we don't know based on the data that we have available right now. We just don't know. We don't, we don't know have enough information as to what was going on in these patients' yeah. lives that really led to this terrible decision to take their own lives yeah, at the end. We've seen this a number of times, Mike, in the NFL mm -hmm. in particular, right? Sure, you see it in the NFL. You see it with players like Dave Dewerson, Junior Seau, guys who seem to have it all, and then you hear these stories post-career of depression, of marital trouble, relationship trouble, financial troubles, all of these things leading together. And then you look back at their career and you see multiple concussions and you see multiple concussions not taken care of. You see guys like Seo not missing games because of those concussions and just keep on going on doing the same thing but, over and over again. But Mike, that's the NFL. Let's talk about college sports and sure. how it's actually uh, sanctioned and wh what people look out for in terms of concussions. Are they even keeping track of that stuff? Are they, most of them are keeping track of it, but the protocol in the NFL versus college versus high school is vastly different. In the NFL, you have multiple independent neurosurgeons from prestigious hospitals. At college stadiums, you have the trainer and the team doctor looking out for these things. Yeah. Let's not fool ourselves. College football, they're raking in billions of dollars oh, in yeah. TV revenues. You're telling me that Notre Dame, Ten, Michigan, yeah, yeah. Ohio State, State yeah. these teams should have the same protocols put in that a team like the New York Giants have, but when you look at other schools, other high schools, they just don't have that infrastructure where they could do that. Right, and again, we're talking about you know a lot of games and whatnot, but what about during practices? I mean, you know, high school, I played high school football, mm -hmm. and in practice, we had a, a trainer at my high school, but look, you get knocked around a bit, and it's part of a practice, right? Did, I don't know. A, a, a word that the New York Giant, Giant trainer used in a New York Times article of, we're not going to use the word dinged anymore. That's the culture of football probably yeah, yeah, when yeah, you're growing right, yeah, yeah. Oh, you just got oh, a you stinger. Got, oh, you, got your, down, you, got your bell, you got your bell wrong. Get back in there. Next man up. These are all words, phrases, culture of football that well, need to let's change. Let's talk about the psychology of it all. I mean, what do we need to know as parents and look out for things like this? Obviously, this mother said, you know, she noticed her son mm -hmm. acting erratically. The behavior was there. The pattern of depression was there. But obviously, he didn't get the help that he needed. And then we saw what happened, the outcome, in which no one wants for their own child. First, we we all need to understand that depression is very common after a concussion. In fact, it's three times really? more likely to occur after a concussion. And there's contributing factors. One, is, one could be related to the physical injury itself. Another is the emotional aftermath of the injury, the isolation, the loss of identity. And the third can be related to factors that are actually unrelated to the injury and have to do more with the pre-existing psychological condition of the individual prior to the injury itself. Yeah, there really is so much to, to look at here. And again, you're looking at, the, at pictures of uh, Costa Cara George. Right now, the coroner is going to be looking at his brain it, when they do the autopsy. Because again, what? they're trying to figure out all of these questions yeah. here, uh, and figure out if perhaps concussions did play a role in his death. But thank you for being here. Yeah. Uh, it was really an interesting conversation. And as a parent, I want to know like what I can do to protect my kids. And obviously, it's a conversation you have to have with the teachers, the coaches, and know that the proper precautions are in place. And as a parent, look out for the psychological stuff. Absolutely. I just want to know, as a doctor, when do you tell a kid to go back to a field if they have a concussion, or do you have to make sure you follow up, follow up, follow up? I, I think we're very careful these days. You know, we take them out very early on if there's a, even a suspicion of a concussion. Yeah. 
And then we follow these kids very, very carefully, very thoroughly. And then there's a, a graded step, a, a protocol of getting them back into action. So it's case and by that, case. And that takes at least a week, and it may take much longer if, they, if the symptoms persist. Yeah, case by case basis, everybody. For more information on concussions and all these athletes and what's happening, please go to our website at pix11.com. All right, time now is 7.42. And you know how police use breathalyzers yeah. to test for drunk drivers? Well, now researchers are working on a tool to detect drivers that are high. 